I listened to my mother most of the time. The trouble was she talked all the time. <laughs> she shared her dating advice. If you have a sexual urge, eat an orange instead. <laughs> her cleaning tips, be sure you have all the dishes in the dishwasher before you go to bed. So in case you have a fire, the kitchen will be clean for the firemen. <laughs> and her world, world views. Why don't Jews celebrate Christmas, she'd ask. They're Americans too, <laughs> really. <laughs> but she also said, mind your elders and learn from them. You will have many mothers in the world. And I did listen to that. Most of my extra mothers were the women in a little town in Southern Illinois, where I would spend my summers with my grandmother who owned a restaurant. Through her, I learned a woman can be anything, a mom, a grandma, and a business owner. When I was visiting, we'd arrive at a restaurant about 7.30 in the morning. Mama would have her bowl of oats, eat a good breakfast. I'd have a glazed donut. <laughs> then after choosing the pie that I would eat for dinner, plan ahead. I would head out for the streets of Murfreesboro, seek adventure every day. First, I'd stop at the Woolworth store, where my great-aunt Kat worked behind the candy counter. Choose a job you love. <laughs> Next, I would head down Main Street to my Aunt Imie's beauty shop, another business owner. There, I'd help out by cleaning combs and sweeping up hair. Always make yourself useful. Or else I was the guinea pig for Sharon the Apprentice. I was the only eight-year-old with plucked eyebrows and a twice-weekly manicure. <laughs> Appearance is important. I'd also listen to and learn from the conversations of all the women there, especially Pearl, who owned a monkey. Definitely a life goal. And she had a slew of ex-boyfriends. Not a good goal. <laughs> But I'm convinced that she was the model for Flo, that kiss my grits waitress on TV. Attitude's important. <laughs> After a bit, I'd head back to the restaurant. There, I'd sit at the lone table in the kitchen and learn from the mothers there. Hazel was always at the big black stove frying up something. Fried food is comfort food. And then there was Lou. She was tall and thin and talked all the time. I love to listen to Lou talk. Not so much for what she had to say, but for the click. Because Lou had false teeth that didn't fit right. <laughs> and about every second or third sentence, they'd fall, and, and you could hear it. Visit the dentist regularly. <laughs> or sometimes, she'd raise up her arm, armpit hair. <laughs> Lou was the only woman I knew at the time that didn't shave under her arms. And for some reason, the sight of that hair could just make my day. <laughs> it's all right to be different. <laughs> and then there was my grandmother, my pretty little grandmother. She'd come to work all dressed up, take pride in your job. Even at 65, she'd be at work from morning till night, except for the two hours in the afternoon when she'd go home to watch the soap operas. <laughs> it's important to take breaks. But then, in the summer of 1964, the, the women began avoiding me when they talked. I tried to listen, but I could only get bits. It was something about the colored, their word, podiatrist from town. He was going to test something out. I couldn't tell what it was, but it had them worried, concerned, maybe even scared. I learned right then, stay away from him. And then one day, I was sitting in the dining room at the restaurant. It was noon, and the place was really filling up. It was loud with talking and laughter, mostly men. There were the men from the phone company, the electric company, businessmen, and, of course, the county road workers. <laughs> they always were there for breakfast, donuts at 10, and then again at noon for dinner. <laughs> and then the door opened, and my Uncle Gov walked in. He was the county sheriff and my favorite person in the whole wide world. But he sat with some men, and I knew not to disturb. And then the door opened again, 
and in walked the colored podiatrist. And that whole noisy room got completely quiet as all eyes watched him walk to the counter and sit down at the empty stool next to me. Uncle Gov jerked his head to tell me to get out of the way, but I just sat there. Then two of the county road workers got up from their table. They hadn't even finished eating yet. And they didn't walk to the cash register to pay. They walked toward me. I saw Uncle Gov start to stand. And then from the corner of my eye, I saw the swinging door from the kitchen open up and out walked my grandmother. She walked towards me too and I thought, uh-oh. But when she got to me, she turned her back to me, crossed her arms over her chest, and stared right at those two big, burly county workers. They stared at each other for a moment, a minute, until one of the workers put his eyes down and walked back to his table, and then the other did the same. My grandmother stood there the entire time that podiatrist ordered, ate his chicken and dumplings, went to the cash register to pay. When he walked out of the door, Uncle Gov got up and stood in front of it. And that room stayed quiet for another moment, minute, and then it erupted in loud, angry voices. I learned a lot that day. I learned that the podiatrist was not a bad man, that my Uncle Gov would uphold the law no matter what others thought. But mostly I learned from my grandmother. Stand up for what you love. Stand up for what you believe in. Thank you, Mama. Those are words to live by. I'm glad I listened. <laughs>